on the grid for the Hungarian E-Pri and the lights are lighting up and there we off and we are away for the Hungarian E-Pri another smoky start despite using my own custom setup straight away the AI having to take a couple of laps to warm up their tyres and we do force Nico Prost out wide there and oh my word where uh, De Costa has lost his front wing because of that going down the inside of Oliver Turvey and it looks like we got the move but PK is actually holding us up no we actually we do go around PK and we're leading the Hungarian E-Pri is he going to go round the outside of Heifeld going into the first corner? No! Degrassi goes into the back of Nick Heifeld. These guys are at, near the back of the field. They're at the back of this massive train anyway. Jesus! Burton goes over Daniel Apt. We actually come out of the pits behind Nico Prost. We do get past Prost, but we came out of the pits behind Sarazan. Bearing in mind, we came into the pits a lap earlier than Sarazan, but he got out ahead of us, and so did Prost temporarily. Anyway, what about those next EV cars? They're in the pits now, and... Nowhere to be seen, actually. We had come out ahead of them. And we're in the slipstream. And can we get past Sarazan? We've got the slight momentum. And I don't know. We got the inside line for the first corner. Yeah, we break later. And we are now leading the Hungarian E3 once again. Anyway, yeah, we do run wide. No, Sarazan, actually. Bearing in mind, this is on the last lap. Sarazan, very opportunistic move. The third sector. This is where we're quick compared to the AI. We've got past Sarazan twice coming out to the last corner are we gonna do it again we got to run on Sarazan but no I think we're too far behind and um, we might get past him before the first corner but will we get past him before the start finish line and we got the momentum we got the run and no we're just not gonna do it Sarazan has won the Hungarian e -Pri. we're just behind the second Nico Prost you could just see off in the distance he is in third Right, okay, so hey guys, it's PSL here, and we're here for the fifth episode in this Formula E series on Formula 1 tracks. We're here at Zandvoort for the Dutch e Prix, a track that hasn't been used in Formula 1 since 1985, I believe, but because it was used so much um, in the early days of Formula 1, it's still to this day on the top 10 most used tracks of all time. And also, it's Robin Fryns' home race, and remember, Robin Fryns still hasn't scored a point, so let's see if he can finally score a point um, at his home race. Oh yeah, I'm going to show you my entire pole position, uh, not pole position lap, god no, but my entire quickest qualifying lap, just to show you uh, the layout of Zanvoort. I had no idea what the layout of Zanvoort was, um, and I'm sure many of you guys don't, and this is the 1965 layout of Zanvoort, but I believe it stayed relatively the same um, the, all the time it was on the F1 calendar. Anyway, going around this left-handed hairpin, and that's basically the last breaking point of the track. Believe it or not, um, we've done a third of the lap only, and that's the last time we're going to be braking. It's only because in these cars, these cars, the Formula E cars, they only go about 130 miles an hour. They got lots of um, grip, and really, there's, I don't know. It's because this track was designed for Formula One back in the day, and obviously, Formula One cars are way quicker than Formula E cars, even back in the 60s. So, this track would have been quite tough, quite terrifying I reckon to drive back in the day, but because these cars only go 136 miles an hour, because they got lots of grip, it's just easy, it's just flat out constantly. You maybe have to lift off the accelerator a couple of times, um, and that's basically that really. There's only two braking points, and that's the first corner, and then the other one I mentioned, the left-handed hairpin. But it's a really nice track, lots of sweeping left and right bends, really nice to drive, really easy in these cars. And we're going to come across the start-finish line. There's the pit lane off to the right-hand side. As you can see, no pit wall, no nothing. It's just a painted white line, which tells you a lot about Formula 1 back in the day. Obviously, this is the 1965 layout of the track. But it does tell you about how unregulated and um, the pit lane was back in the day and how really dangerous Formula 1 was, even in the pit lane. Anyway, jean oak Verne takes pole position with Nelson Piquet second. Nico Pross is in third, so that's the top three with uh, Silvestro fourth, Senna fifth. Robin Freinzer's home race is in 6th, so he's in a good position to get some points. And then there's us, um, all the way down in 2nd to last. The only reason Oliver Turvey is slower than us is because he didn't set a lap time, like, come the end of the session, he didn't set a lap time, so I had to click finish session just so he would do a lap time, because obviously if I didn't, he would have been on pole position unfairly. It really, it basically, it makes no difference. I just wanted Turvey to start at the back, then at the front. Um, anyway, um, so the lights are lighting up. Actually, there's no lights. So we're going to have to wait for the checkered flag to be dropped. Or not the checkered flag, the starting flag to be dropped. And away we go. Um, 
I've completely lost what I was saying because obviously there's no starting lights. So that's ruined everything I was going to say. The Dutch E-Prix is a go. That's normally what I say. Um, so we had to break out of the start because... Well, we had to break out of the start because otherwise we were going into the back of Degrassi because it's two and three abreast the starting grid. Degrassi going all over the place trying to mount D'Ambrosio there. It's such a hectic start. It's such a narrow track and you cannot go offline because those mounds, which, you know, the orange mounds you can see... You, if you go over them, that's it, you're beached, which is ironic, because this is um, by the beach, isn't it, Zandvoort, I believe, um, it's a seaside town, um, but no, if you go on those mounds, that is it, you're beached and your race is over, well, maybe not over, but definitely completely destroyed, anyway, we're right up behind Sebastian Buemi, and we go right around the outside of Buemi, fantastic stuff, and we're alongside Sarazan, and yep, we, well, we've got past Sarazan, we've got past two people around that corner, going around the outside line of that corner, really worked out there so now we're up into 10th place we've come from second to last technically to um to the points positions right up behind both Aguri cars there and now what are we going to see now we're going to see yeah a replay of the start so Vern is on pole position um but well technically but he had Prost and PK starting right alongside him and Vern's got the inside line for the first corner but he took pole position, but I mean, you know, he's got not much of an advantage over Prost and PK because they all started right alongside him because that's just how starting grids were back in the day in Formula 1. Anyway, yeah, so, well, Prost and PK still right... No, Prost and Verne still side by side. PK has put him... Hey, wait. PK was passed by one of the Andrettis. He's now repassed that Andretti. And actually, both Andrettis, they do need to score some points because they're last in the constructor standings at the moment. Prost has got past Verne, so Verne's lost first place, which um, he qualified in first, but that's meant nothing now because he's down to second. And in fact, down into third as PK got past Verne at the same corner that we got past a ton of people. So Verne has gone down from first to third. Uh, so, well, it's good in the grand scheme of things, but considering you got pole position, that's quite disappointing for Verne. Anyway, so we got Senna right at the back of Frines, and Senna just went into the back of Frines. Actually, quite a light accident, but Frines has got no damage. Senna's lost his front wing, and this is on, like, the first lap of the race, really. So Senna's got to come into the pits to get that replaced. Maybe, no, second lap, I think, actually. Second lap of the race that happens. Um, and then we've got Heifeld behind Sarazan, and what on earth happened there? Heifeld has lost his front right wheel. Sarazan has lost a wheel. He's lost his rear wing. Both cars are out. What on earth happened there? Let's have another look at this crash. So we've got Sarazan and Heifeld's right behind. So what does Sarazan do exactly? He's just going about his way and he just veers off track and then just goes back on. Well, that was weird. Sarazan just went off to the right-hand side of the track and then went back on it. Well, uh, that worked. Uh, okay, I have no idea why he did that. We'll see us again. Sarazan, he went off to the right-hand side for no reason, rejoins the racing line and goes into Heifeld. He had no reason to do that. I, unless it was a mistake, like he locked up the brakes. I don't know. No idea what happened there. Um, anyway, we're right up behind both the Guri cars. As you can see, we're, we're quicker than them, but you cannot get past because, yeah, the track is not the widest in the world, and as I said, it's not easy to pass in these cars anyway. Um, when they all max out the same speed. We got past the Costa, we got past Frines around the same corner, we got past a couple of other people on the first lap and we're up into 8th place. We actually followed Nathaniel Burton past Robin Frines, who Frines is now down in ninth. Um, yeah, so coming on to end the second lap of the race. Uh, there's Senna off in the pit, so we're going to gain a position from that. And what a dangerous pit lane. Obviously, that does speak volumes about how much safety's improved, even in trivial things like the pit lane. Um, but Senna's off into the pits, we're up in 7th place, and Senna's going to have to do a two-stop strategy now, because it's had 9 laps worth of fuel for this race, Senna's pitted on the first lap, he's going to have to do a two-stop. Um, everyone else should be doing a one-stop anyway, we're right up behind Nathaniel Burton, because Burton did get away from us a bit, but we caught back up to him once again, and we're right behind him, but it's difficult to overtake. I mean, we've just gone past like the last braking zone on that track, so I don't know how we're going to get past him, unless we do it around the sweeping right hand corner, no we don't because we cut away from that shot um, so there you go and we've got Vern, he's going to try and get back into first, he's right behind PK fantastic move past PK and Vern is up into second place and look how tightly packed the field is, there's us back there look how tightly packed the field is because of all the cars max out at the same speed first to 17th, well no to 15th rather is so tightly packed, 
PK is coming under threat from Simona Di Silvestro. Silvestro's got the inside line, but there's been chaos at the back. PK's lost his rear wing. Daniel Apt has lost his front wing. And it's just chaos. I mean, that's why I said the field is so tightly packed. You haven't Vern has got past Nico Prost up at the front. So Vern is now leading it. Is he going to hold first place? No, he isn't. Prost has got the inside line, but Vern was challenging for the lead there once again. Vern on a charge. Okay, so let's have a look. This is a, a replay, but from my perspective, what happened with PK losing his rear wing, all this and that. So let's have a look. That is dangerous. That is all that um, body parts flying at us. Frines! Where on earth has Frines come from? Frines at his home race just barges past us, and he's moved up a place, but now there's chaos. So we talk about the field being tightly packed. With Apps losing his front wing, he really is holding us up. we got to try and get past Frines, Silvestro, Burton. Burton's got past Apt. Um, and hopefully Apt can hold up Silvestro, but no, Frines holds us up, and this is why it's so difficult to overtake at this track, because, you know, the field's always tightly packed. I mean, it, well, I guess now, I mean, Apt is kind of holding up the rest of the field. I mean, it's just crazy. I mean, we're going to try and get back past Frines, who made that lunging move on us at the first corner. Fantastic move from Frines, I thought. Um, very good from the AI. It's almost like we saw Sarazan at the last race, a very opportunistic um, move there. Anyway, Daniel Apt... I don't know, uh, he just, he, I don't know, maybe PK broke early, maybe Abt broke late, but either way, it's cost them both aerodynamic parts then, they're both going to have to come into the pits, um, and they'll probably have to do a two-stop strategy now as well. Now, an incident involving us, what's all this about? So, DaCosta, okay, did DaCosta go into the back of us? Apparently so, there was no damage to my car, um, I felt a nudge, I thought it was on Frines, but apparently it's on DaCosta, so he's lost his front wing now, so all sorts happened at that first corner, and now we got an incident between Frines and Degrassi, again, we're right in front of this, we're, this is as we get past Frines, and Degrassi is gone, he's gone flying up the grass bank, and, well, that is Degrassi's race completely destroyed, he is out of the race, and that was enough for incident, we were just in front of that, and we had no idea what happened until we checked the replay, let's have a look, the championship leader, he's a way back on the grid, how does he see it, yeah, he just sees Degrassi go flying off the left hand side, um, there's Frines pulls off, so Frines is out of the race, so is Degrassi, and honestly, this has been such a crazy race. I mean, we were just in front of that incident. If we didn't pass Frines, Degrassi probably would have gone to the back of us, so we narrowly avoid colliding with uh, uh, Degrassi there, and as you can see, PK has gone into the back of Vern. I don't know how PK has been able to catch up to Vern to go into the back of him, but regardless, PK has now lost his front wing as well as his rear wing. Vern's lost his rear wing. It's honestly so much... This is all in the same lap, by the way. All of these incidents happening on the same lap. And Daniel Apt has gone. Daniel Apt is out of the race. He has spun out right in front of us. This is all still happening on the same lap. The whole De Costa incident, PK. This is all the same lap. Degrassi, all on the same lap. And now we've got some cars coming into the pits. We've got Vern going to come in the pits. PK is going to be in the pits. And this really unregulated, quite dangerous pit lane. And oh my word. Some incident happened in the pit lane. We got whacked by some front wing I believe it was then we're gonna we were going slow down the straight so we had to break and let all the people pass D'Ambrosio decided to not pass us for some weird reason all the other people have gone past us because we, we were going too slow down that straight once we got whacked by that flying bit of part anyway Daniel Lapp let's see his incident again and Daniel Lapp yeah goes into the back of Burton really but Burton was being held up by PK who's held up by Vern because they lost parts I mean Daniel Lapp had no front wing anyway so honestly crazy scenes involving Lack of aerodynamic parts. Obviously, Burton has to come into the pits as well. So, let's have a look what happens in the pit lane. So, there's PK in the pits. Burton's right behind. Burton goes into the back of PK. And Vern absolutely smacks Nathaniel Burton. And there is no speed limit in this pit lane. Honestly, there's no speed limit. There's no speed limit. There's no pit wall. There's no nothing. Such a dangerous pit lane. But this is why it's produced such an interesting race. Burton's out. Vern is still in the race, interestingly. It's... I don't even know what on earth has happened. So let's have a look at this on board from Vern. So Burton goes slowly because he whacked PK and Vern should have broke there. He should have broke but obviously the AI don't really have that intelligence. They, the AI think, oh yeah, there's no speed limit. We'll go as fast as we can. The problem is, if, if you're at the end of the pit lane and someone like PK is at the front of the pit lane, then you basically... Burton was going to, his pit box is at the end of the pit lane, PK's is right at the start of the pit lane, so PK has to break early, Burton doesn't want to, because, you know, it costs him time, so he goes into the back of PK, he loses his front wing, that's Burton's front wing that goes flying around, 
Verne goes into that and we'll see the front wing goes across left hand side of the track and smacks us. That's Burton's front wing that went into the side of us thanks to Verne hitting it. Um, and as you can see Verne's pit box is right at the end of the pit lane. So that's why Verne just has no regard for Burton and it, this is such a dangerous unregulated pit lane because there's no speed limit, there's no nothing, so there's nothing to stop people at the back of the pit lane going into the people at the front of the pit lane like we saw with PK and Burton which is that's why PK is going so slowly because his pit box is at the front anyway I've I've the vehicle I've had my car controlled by the AI because there's some weird glitch of this track where if you pull into the pit box as a human player quite often it won't register in the pit box so I've had to get the AI to get me into the pit box just because or else it will glitch out or I'll be sat in the pit lane forever and Oh my word, the one time I get the AI in this game to drive for me and they just go into the back of Duval. I mean, it's quite handy, Duval, the championship leader, is out of the race, but I'm literally sat here just thinking, what has happened this race? Because in the past two laps, so many crashes have happened. In the past three minutes, about six people have retired from the race. Um, I do take back player control and I'm thinking, please don't let the pit box glitch out. Please don't let the pit box glitch out. So I pull into the pit box, and it actually works this time. You won't believe how many test runs I did in this race, and the pit box wouldn't register that I was in it, but it worked that time. But, uh, crazy scenes anyway. So, well, we're looking at, uh, this is um, Di Silvestro, I believe. So, that's Buemi goes right into the back of Di Silvestro. What crazy scenes happened there. And then there's a separate incident between us, Duval, and Oliver Turvey, I believe, that is up front. So... Silvestro's retired, Turvey's retired, they're in their pit box, but they have retired from this race. So, Silvestro, Buemi, again, it's another instant. Buemi at the back of the pit lane just has no regard for people at the front of the pit lane and just, you know, swipes out Silvestro. So, good job, Buemi, you know, good job of driving in the pit lane, my son, well done. So, Turvey, so he has to slow down to avoid this crash. He's actually sensible, he slows down to avoid the crash. And he's about to turn to his pit box, but then he gets smacked by Duval because... Turvey, like PK, is at the front of the pit lane. And Duval just doesn't care because he's further on in the pit lane. There's no speed limit. Yeah, Turvey was just about to go into his box. Duval smacks him. Because my AI is controlling my car, I smack Duval because the AI have no regard for people crashing in the pit lane. The pit lane, if there's no speed limit, they ain't going to slow down. Okay, and then, so that's all the chaos happening. D'Ambrosio stays out. There's all so Villeneuve. Genuinely, this race is only three people who have avoided contact. D'Ambrosio, Villeneuve, and Nico Pross is in the lead. So everyone else has had to come into the pits early because of damage. We came into the pits early because I was consuming more fuel than I expected. So uh, there goes a Mahindra by. That must be, in fact, that has to be Bruno Senna, doesn't it? So Bruno Senna has passed us. Um, it's honestly so crazy. 53 second pit stop. Yeah, we had to come into the pits a couple of laps earlier than the nine lap uh, stop because we were consuming more fuel than the AI. Everyone else came into the pits early because of damage, apart from Prost, D'Ambrosio, and um, and Villeneuve. So, what did Prost? No, I, don't th I think Prost came into the pits early anyway, though. Anyway, yes, I think Prost has already come to the pits, weirdly. I don't really quite know what happened to Prost. But here's D'Ambrosio and Villeneuve going into the pits. As you can see, I, they came into the pits as I was in the pits. So, D'Ambrosio and Villeneuve actually nearly lapped me, embarrassingly. Um... And here's Bruno Senna. He's in the lead because, obviously, he came in right at the start of his race to replace his front wing. He's in the lead, but he has to do a two-stop strategy. Everyone else is only stopping once. So Senna, from the lead of the race, where will he rejoin? Obviously, he has been able to avoid the chaos because he was about 20 seconds behind from the chaos. So he's avoided all the crashes, but Pross has got past him. So he's in second at least, Bruno Senna. So Pross has got past. PK's got past. Uh, that's um, a team of Guri Car. I think that's DaCosta's got past. But he's still fourth at the moment. No, Verne has gone past. Okay. And there's Buemi. Buemi's still in the race despite taking out Silvestro. But Senna has got out ahead of D'Ambrosio and Villeneuve. And D'Ambrosio and Villeneuve are the only two people to have avoided uh, contact this race. But despite that, they're at the back. Apart from me, actually. I am at the back. I'm a good miles behind everyone else. But there's only nine runners left this race. Because so many crashes happened in that in the space of those two laps. So many crashes happened. There's only nine runners left. Um, and we skipped on to the start of the last lap. Honestly, nothing happened. Genuinely, nothing happened this race. Not not a single overtake, to my knowledge. 
Uh, Villeneuve pulled out about six seconds away from me since I came out of the pits. Nothing happened. No crashes, no overtakes, no nothing. So we skip forward to the end of the race, and Nico Prost has been able to, to survive the Dutch e and he's going to win the Dutch e at Zandvoort because he's been able to survive it, I think is the accurate term. PK comes through in second as he's been able to beat Verne and to Costa. Antonio Felix de Costa in third. What an amazing result. Verne fourth. Buemi fifth. There's Bruno Senna sixth, and D'Ambrosio has been able to catch up to Senna, but not quite quickly enough. Senna sixth, D'Ambrosio seventh. Jacques Villeneuve is in eighth. He's been able to survive this race. I mean, as I said, I'll say it again, D'Ambrosio and Villeneuve, the only two people this race to avoid contact at all. I think Prost did as well, and technically I did, apart from in the pit lane. Um, but that was the AI's fault, not my fault. It was, obviously, what a crazy race. I mean, this is the last time we go to a track with an unregulated pit lane. Oh, no. Second to last race is at the old layout of Nürburgring. Oh my word, there's going to be death and destruction at that race. There was a lot of chaos. It was an Armageddon this race was, but we're going to come through to take last place, ninth place, two solid championship points. Honestly, bearing in mind how crazy that race was, how dangerous it was, I will take that. To finish is an achievement. It's only two points, but I couldn't care less. We finished, we scored some points, and what a remarkable achievement. Honestly, because that race was crazy. Um, as you can see, there's the standings there. Uh, I don't know how De Costa got past Verne, but he jumped him in the pit somehow. Um, but anyway, yeah. So Duval, the championship leader, actually scores a point because he was the last person to retire. He's in 10th place. As you can see, look at all the crashes that happened. Lap 6, 7 and 8. Those three laps was when everything happened. Anyway, on to the Drivers' Championship, and I hope you love that picture in the background. That's... That's off the Carassi's crash, and quite frankly, I think it's one of the best pictures I've ever taken for one of my videos. But anyway, me only scoring two points, Sam Bird only scoring two points, means, uh, well, we've overtaken Duval, but just. We're ahead of Duval on a race win count. Bruno Senna scored some decent points this race, so did Verne, so did Buemi, so did PK, so did Prost, and all of those guys are right behind us. Senna, Verne, Buemi, PK, and Prost are all within 10 points of us. And then if you extend it to Sarazan, Burton and Turvey, i.e. the entire top 10 is within a race win of taking the lead. Onto the team's championship and Prost winning that race and Buemi being right up there means that they have jumped Virgin in the team's championship. They were quite a way behind us going into this race, but no, I mean, I only scored two points. Vern scored, well, he got fifth and pole position, so, you know, we got uh, quite a few points, but... Edams, Renault Edams, they completely outscored us this race, and it looks like it's going to be a battle between us and Edams for the team's championship, but Dragon aren't too far behind, same for Venturi, in fact actually Dragon, Venturi, Mahindra and Next EV are only 7 points at max away from each other, it's such a tight championship, once you exclude Apt and Andretti. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode, and this was such a crazy race, obviously we knew it was going to be somewhat crazy because of the track layout, because of the pit lane. It was going to be crazy, and obviously I had to use Zandvoort. It's on the top 10 most used tracks in Formula 1. I had to use it, but I didn't expect it to be this crazy. It was a complete Armageddon. I'm proud of myself for surviving that race. Sure, I came last of the finishers. I couldn't care less. Um, but anyway, the next race is at Monza, the most used track in Formula 1. And that should be more normal. We're going to use the modern layout of Monza. It's going to be hopefully quite normal. Hopefully there'll be no pit lane traumas. Hopefully we'll be able to have a relatively clean race. I hope so because this race was complete Armageddon. But that was just the challenge of this track. And some of you guys might be quite annoyed by how chaotic it was. But that's just the nature of the track. Like Monaco you're bound to get more crashes. And just this one you're bound to get more. Sure some of them were stupid with the AI in the pit lane. But what can you do? So I'll see you guys next time for the Italian Epri at Monza. So I'll see you then.